What is going on everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we are going to be working on a steel BG55. Now this is a very simple repair but a little bit confusing because it's not as simple as just we're going to be changing the carburetor but it's not as simple as just taking off the carburetor and putting a new one on. We do have to take a little bit of the machine apart. But if you follow this video, I'm going to show you guys step by step how to do that. This should be pretty self-explanatory for a lot of these handheld steel saws. So yeah, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to bust right into it. And all we need is two tools, a T27, T25 will work, or no, T27, T25 will work, and an 8mm. Pretty simple to do this job. So without further ado, we're gonna jump right into this. I will have a link in the description to everything I use, the tools, the eight millimeter, the T27, and um, this carburetor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open it. And I love this, this is a knockoff carburetor. But let me tell you something good about it. It comes with a really good air filter, like almost steel quality air filter. I really love this knockoff air filter. Comes with extra primer bulbs, which you can use to stock up for the future, because sometimes machines just come in, and all you gotta do is just change the stupid primer bulb. It comes with steel sort of fuel line. I don't know if this is steel quality, because steel fuel lines really never go bad with the rubber they're used. But for a knockoff, like this is really good quality. I'm just saying, you know, I ain't gonna lie. Another fuel filter which that's all good on this. Comes with the gaskets. Oh shoot, there's another four. What the hell did they give? They're just like, they have so many of these, they're just giving them out. They're like, screw it, just take the damn things. And then it comes with, of course, the new carburetor. And it all has the steel look, but you know, not quite steel. So it's just gonna go right there, blah. And we're gonna change that. So let's get right into this repair, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know why I say ladies, like one of you watch us here at Simply Andrews Repairs. I know a lot of you small engine fanboys are gonna get mad that I'm using an impact on a two stroke. Some of you guys have major hard ons when I use an impact on a steel product. Three T27s to take the recoil off. Remember what the bolts look like. These will have, I'll show you. These will have a little cap on them. And there should be trace. Three. Oh, I lied, four. One right here. This one doesn't have a cap and it's coarse thread. Pay attention to that. Yeah, and you know what? I was watching a live stream today, and you know, I don't know why people talk shit about these two-stroke motors. They're so fun to work on and really easy. But there's some two-stroke haters out there. And it's not a good thing. I mean, everybody has their preference, but they're so cheap, I think that's the problem. And then people like to run them straight gas, and then he's just gonna have a bad time. But the thing about them is though, is that's why I do this YouTube channel. So I can just show you guys how to do this without going to the shop. I don't know why I'm trying to remove that spark plug. You don't need to. This should just come up. And we just gotta disconnect the throttle. Just like that. And it comes on a little pin here and make sure this thing does come out. So if it falls out, pay attention to that. It goes right here, throttle, and then this kill wire goes over that metal. And that's the hardest part is probably putting that back on. We could have took off this air filter first. And see, look, look here, this is official steel. This is official steel, because none of this has changed. I'll even show you the carburetor. Look at that. Look how good the build is on this dunk off air filter. I, steel makes such good air filters, I don't even have to change this one. I'm gonna give them this one as a backup. But look at that, look at the quality. What's the difference? I can't tell. They're both made in China, but look at that. Love it, love it. Some aftermarket companies are really good. Now, we're almost done. Pretty much, we're pretty much almost done. 
The only reason I just dropped the throttle. The only reason we had to take that off was to get this out, the throttle. Because the way you do it, just removing this, you won't be able to actually pull it out all the way. So now our eight millimeter comes into play. And here you guys go. Cringe, because I know how much you guys hate this. Trust me, I'm not gonna go hardcore when I put it back on, I promise you. I promise you, I've been doing this for a long time. I'm not gonna break the machine. I do know what I'm doing somewhat. Most of the time I don't, and I'm just swinging it, but trust me. Some of you guys out there are such hardcore steel fanboys. You guys just cry a lot. I mean, no offense, but I love you guys. But it's just a, it's just a brand. It's just a brand. Someone in the comments needs to explain to me, you know, what it is. What it is about steel. Because people hate Husqvarna too. I don't know why. Husqvarna is pretty good. So, also, if this video is helping you out so far, Smash that like button. Also hit that subscribe button. It really helps in the future. Because I upload almost, I do I try to do two videos a week. And I'm really able to get there, you know. I really have enough time and energy to do it. And I try to make it fun. So let's do a comparison of these carburetors. Here they are. Looking right at it, you could tell this prior bulb, you know, if I, with my 20 extra that they gave me, I could do it, but they're the same exact size. The feel, that matter of fact, the, the, okay, brown is original, and this is not, the original doesn't even have barbed lines, but the aftermarket does have barbed lines. So in my opinion, that's a plus. The barbed lines to help hold that on there even though steel makes good fuel lines, I'm not gonna lie. Now, this, you need a special steel. On the steel one, you need a special steel adjuster to do it right. On this, you just need a flathead. A little flathead will work fine for this one. So that's a plus too, it's more accessible. And here's the big difference, ladies and gentlemen. Oh wow, this ain't a Walbro. Zama, China. Everybody says, oh, OEM's made in America. It's not, but there is the difference. That's why this carburetor costs more money. That right there. That's the only real difference on this carburetor. Matter of fact, this one has barbed lines and easier accessible adjustments. Like, how are you gonna go wrong with that? That's amazing, you know? Instead, they wanna make it hardcore. Mm, let me check. I don't think we need to change. We'll keep the original steel gaskets on there. They're fine. And you know what else is funny? This is what I've been thinking. Everybody else is making these videos saying about like there's a part shortage. Anytime I've ever needed a part since the beginning, I've been doing this for the last five years, I've had no problem. Now I can understand if you're stocking up and doing all this other stuff. Yeah, it's a big deal. Hang on, I got a phone call. Okay, hey guys, future video coming up. Honda, EM, what do we got? EM 650, so yeah, that was my call. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna go refilm that and get that repair going. So I put the gasket back on. Now from here, I do highly recommend you put this on first because these eight millimeters are hard to get to with all this plastic here. And now with there's room, we can actually just start them. We can start them up pretty. And I have a feeling this thing's gonna purr like a damn kitten or roar like a damn lion. I mean, it doesn't have that much power. Now look, with my impact, I can go real slow. Okay. There you go. One little click. You know, one ooga dooga. See? There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Don't cry in the comment section. Oh, I'll never let you work on my, <laughs> someone said that one time. I would never let you work on my products using an impact. That was when I was working on a steel saw. 
If I can find the comment, I'll put it up. It'll be pretty funny to read for you guys. So now with that out of the way, we are almost done with this repair. Like I said, when we put this in, we want to make sure the throttle goes over there. Matter of fact, let me get the throttle ready. We can do that right now. Here's the throttle. It's going to go chica chica. Something like this. There we go. That goes in there. And that goes. Look at me praising this aftermarket carburetor and the hole's a little tight because it's brand new and not worn out. There we go. That's a good thing. You want to see that in your in your um, life. You know, tight holes. You know, you're never going to hear someone saying, my hole's too tight, loosen it up. You're never going to hear that. It's not something someone says. You want it to go right here. Look like that. It's gonna go right there and right there. And then now, see now when you throttle it, a little throttle action. Yeah, just like that. Except that's gonna go on that side. So now, watch me fiddle with this thing. So I took a poll, <clears throat> I took a poll recently on my channel. I appreciate you guys voting in those. It gives me ideas for videos and stuff. And most of you guys do not wear gloves in your, when you guys do mechanic work. A lot of people says, you know, hey, if it's super greasy, man, I don't want to get all that nasty stuff on me. But I'm surprised the majority of people do say no. And then like, you look at YouTubers too. Throttle's working. Throttle's working great. Now remember, yeah, and it's like I was saying, I, you know, I'm all scatterbrained today. But like I was saying, you know, most of you guys don't use gloves. And you watch all these other YouTubers, and I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head. I know he's not really a small Indian guy, but Chris Fix, he always has gloves on. But most of the small engine community don't wear gloves. Some say yes, but it's like, do you really need them? Throttle's working. Let's make sure it locks in. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. But yeah, so I was surprised about that answer, actually, to be honest. I was expecting a lot more people saying, yes, we wear gloves all the time, Andrew. I don't know why you're not wearing gloves, you dumbass. But no, most of you guys are like, yeah, fuck them gloves. You know, it's hard because a lot of times they, they'll, they'll hinder your movements when you're trying to get up in here and do stuff. But yeah, anytime you guys vote in that poll, I really appreciate it, you know, because it gives me an idea of what, what, what to talk about and what to do, you know. I did one about music, and obviously you guys said it straight up. That's why there's no music playing on this one. I tried to experiment with one, put a little background track in it. But if you guys ever have criticism on my channel, let me know in the comments down below what I could do to fix that. Because I'm starting to get a lot more traction on some of my repairs. I know you guys hate the non-repair ones talking because they get like no views, but I love making them and just talking about mechanic stuff. So I'm still going to do a few of those. Maybe you guys will catch on and start to like it. And now we're going to make sure it primes. Oh, look at that. Suck it up gas beautifully. You can even hear it. And then right now it is Saturday, March 12th, I believe. March 12th or 13th, something like that. And it's snowing in Ohio right now because Bald Eagle told me so. And it is a beautiful day here. I am in a tank top and all this other good stuff. But we are going to take this bad boy out here and we're going to test fire it. I already got her primed up. The repair is pretty much done. I'm going to keep these primer bulbs, this fuel line, and this spark plug, which I don't recommend the aftermarket spark plug. 
I'm gonna give him the air filter because you know it, why not he's paying for the carburetor and stuff but I'm gonna keep the extra supplies for me you know the extra fuel filter and everything that way if this ever does go bad I, I got it back up or if another one comes in but let's go test this thing hopefully it runs hopefully okay ladies and gentlemen moment of truth moment of truth Gonna prime it up again. It's been a little bit. I took a smoke break. Turn it on to the eye mode. Put the choke on. And I'm praying. I'm praying she fires. So far, not looking good. to adjust the idle a little bit. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So pretty much all you gotta do is get in here from this side, give this thing about a full turn or half a turn, switch it to on. Listen for it. Okay, we're gonna need a little more. I like it about right there. You know what, I'll turn it down just a tad. We'll run it a little bit. that again I need to turn that up just a tad bit more get it started again well, let's put it up and take it to the customer and get paid this generator belongs to an asshole and I'm not gonna fix it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video on me repairing this steel leaf blower. It's a pretty good leaf blower for small use. I mean, uh, it's 55 cc, so it's not, you know, top tier. 
sort of speak and um, they kind of wear on your hands so if you're just doing light leaf blowing after you edge the yard or you know you got one little tree or something it's a really good machine and two strokes are fun and the reason it took a long time is this thing sat for about two or three years so it took a little bit to remember what it has to do in life and what it had to do was run so that's why it took a lot of pulls my damn arm's killing me but this is my good arm so without further ado ladies and gentlemen if you made it this far in the video you guys are phenomenal and i would appreciate it if you hit a like button let me know in the comments down below what machines you like to work on or what machines you don't like to work on and don't forget i have a whole playlist of generator repairs right there and i'm thinking i'm going to make a whole playlist of two stroke repairs that i did and i should be right under it so i really appreciate what you guys do for me and watching this so you guys have a great day Till next time, my name is Andrew, and I'll see you later.